So you remember New World, the game a bunch of us got to play earlier this year in that week long early preview event. Open World MMO coming up from uh, Amazon Game Studios just this week. I got to check out this upcoming update that adds a brand new high level zone to the game called Reek Water. The fishing trade skill, along with a few quality of life changes with adjustments to enemy AI, difficulty levels, combat, and UI. Uh, all told, I got to play for roughly about three hours where I went around exploring and checking out a bunch of these changes and I basically just want to walk you through and, and show you what I got to see because there's some pretty interesting stuff here if you're interested in New World. So let's get right into it. I gotta say first off events like this can be a little strange. You get thrown straight into the end game with a brand new character. Fortunately though I played over 50 hours of that preview event so it didn't take too long for me to get my bearings. Uh, the first thing I did was open up my inventory where I had options and access to the full range of weapons, equipment, accessories, and stat choices. So I decided to go with a full set of light armor for maximum dodge, uh, all of the dexterity accessories, and I also put all of my attribute points into dexterity. Interesting note here, I had read that they were changing it and adding diminishing returns um, when you dumped all your stats into one attribute, but the damage numbers kept going up, so I just kept clicking dexterity. <laughs> and then I went through the different weapon masteries and I picked the skills and passives for the weapons that I wanted to use, which were the bow, the life staff, and the spear. Yes, spear, that's right. It's a brand new weapon that was added during one of the previous alpha patches. This is a melee weapon that gives both long distance pierce damage and range capabilities. It does scale primarily on dexterity, hence my incessant clicking earlier. <laughs> and its two skill trees are the impaler and the zoner. So the impaler specializes in closing the gap and quick attacks that impart status effects. It's got the skill Skewer ability where you charge forward, strike your target, and kick them back, applying a bleed effect. Perforate where you perform three quick piercing strikes that apply a rend debuff. And then Vault Kick where you plant the spear, vault forward, and kick the target. This one does a significant amount of stamina damage and also applies an exhaust debuff. And then there is the Zoner skill tree that specializes in keeping enemies at a distance and throwing spears. The first ability is Javelin, which just pulls up your spear, allowing you to aim it and throw it at a target. And and the other two abilities that I didn't actually get to try myself are Cyclone, the spinning attack that knocks back enemies, and Sweep that sweeps the target's legs, knocking them down. So now that I was all set up with my equipment, my weapons, the skills I wanted to use, I played around with the spear attacks for a few minutes and started exploring the new zone of Reekwater. So this is an end game zone for players level 58 to 60. It's actually located east of Everfall and south of Weaver's Fen. It's this swampy region. It's got kind of a southern bayou feel to it. Like there's lots of ferns and moss everywhere, these willowy trees, tons of shallow waters, and a whole hell of a lot of mist. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, the environments in this game, I think, are one of the strong points, really. There are just absolutely some gorgeous landscapes, vistas, and points of interest to discover. Even if, to some degree, a lot of the locations can kind of feel similar, some of the zones have a pretty distinct atmosphere, and I think Reek Water fills that kind of heavily wooded, swampy vibe. Uh, the main settlement in Reekwater is called Reekwater Hamlet. It's this dilapidated fishing village made up of bridges and walkways that are constructed out of wooden planks and ropes. The whole town kind of has this treehouse feel. In fact, there are quite literally homes up in the trees. <laughs> quite a different layout, I have to say as well, from a lot of the other zones settlements, which was a common complaint during the preview event, that a lot of the towns were very similar, in some cases practically identical. So it's cool to see that they're kind of mixing it up a bit with the Reekwater Hamlet. Uh, so I explored around for a bit in the town. I picked up what were three available quests to do. But before I left the town, I played around with the fishing. So this is a brand new trade skill where you collect fish, yeah? <laughs> uh, so basically, whenever you're near water, if you push F3, it's gonna pull out your fishing pole, and then you can click your mouse to cast the line, which will then make a bobber appear in the water, and then when you get a nibble, you have to click again to hook the fish, and then at this point, it starts this kind of mini game, where essentially you hold down click to reel the fish in, but then the tension builds up, so you get a release before it gets too high, because it can potentially break the line, and you have to kind of 
rinse and repeat. I gotta say, it seems to take an awkwardly long amount of time, even in some instances where it was a really short distance. Like to pull in the fish took a really long time after you hooked it. I mean, there could be a fish right in front of me, but I would have to be like reeling and releasing tension and reeling and releasing tension and doing that for like a good 15, 20 seconds. Even if the fish that I hooked was five feet in front of me, I feel like they need to play with this mechanic a little bit so that you only have to do the hooking and reeling a ton when the line is cast further out because that kind of makes the most sense, right? No, I'm not, I don't fish, so I don't know. I explored the town, I tried the fishing, now it's time to actually head out into Reek Water, do some fighting of enemies, check out the new weapons, the changes to combat, and uh, do a bit of questing. So let's talk about that experience. The first quest I did asked me to head on over to Maria's Rest. This was located in the far northeast corner of Reek Water. Now on my way there, I came across a few areas. There was this place called Glimmer Fen, where I fought some angry earth, and even angrier boars. I don't know why their wildlife is so pissed off in this game. <laughs> uh, I got a nice look at some different environmental weather effects as well with this like bio-y swampy area. Like I emerged out of this foggy lowland into this big sun swept field and the sun just like cut through all the fog. It was really cool. Like I said earlier, I like the environments in this game. It absolutely is a strong suit here. Um, I also came across this shrine where I saw an enemy type that I hadn't seen before. These were called Stone Seep Elders and they appear to be summoners. Like they summoned in reinforcements to help them out. So that was neat to see. I also saw these enemies called detonators, which I don't remember seeing those either. These would run up to you and they would explode upon death. A little bit different from the barrel zombies that would run up to you and explode upon death. So I guess this enemy isn't quite different. But anyway, regardless, it was cool to see some more diversity and things that I hadn't explicitly seen during my 50 hours with those preview events. And also something a little more interesting beyond those kind of basic melee zombie and skeleton enemies that this game is just com completely filled with. Kept going, I finally arrived at Maria's Rest and I got this nice extended period of combat. And I also fought some rather difficult elite enemies. There were these yellow ghosts that could instantly teleport to you. They cast this lightning storm, which dealt damage and knocked you back. They had this AOE snare, which would slow me down, and this staggering lightning zap, which would also make it difficult for me to get to them. Just in general, this, this encounter required a bit more maneuvering than a majority of the counter encounters that I'm used to. I also saw these banners that I believe were used to heal and buff their nearby enemies. There were also these elite brawlers, which I for sure have seen before. They are tough with this really strong damage mitigation effect, and they'll, they're also just going to keep charging at you. I worked my way through those, collected these journal pages for my quest, and as I was making my way out of the area, I came across what I assumed to be some sort of a world boss. His name was Smooth Boar Samuel. Now, I figured, I got a bow, maybe I can cheese this guy. Nope. <laughs> One shot, and he was immediately on top of me, smashing away. I did manage to sneak my way into a nearby structure, and I thought maybe I'll just try ranging him from up here, but I learned quickly that the cannon on his back was wasn't just for show, so I made my way out of the area. My next quest took me to these stone ruins. These are kind of rather typical for this game. Uh, this particular one was filled with a variety of melee and archer angry earth enemies, as well as these giant tentacles, which were very, very annoying. They could basically zone you from across the map, or if they weren't doing that, they can burrow underground, pop up right beside you, and knock you on your ass. This entire area was actually rather dense. There was just a a lot of enemies between the tentacle creatures, the ranged and the melee angry earth enemies, and even with a couple other players in the vicinity, it took some work working to make your way through the temple. The respawn rates were also really, really high, but I went in there, killed a bunch of enemies. I gathered these ancient stone tablets that I was looking for, helped some people find theirs because they, they had trouble. And then after that, my remaining quest took me to these ancient guardian towers, a haunted cave, this abandoned coastal village, and some more ruins deep deeper within the swamp. All the while, really getting a nice variety of uh, combat experience, fighting off different zombies, skeletons, and ancient earth. And throughout this whole period of three hours of primarily doing combat, it really gave me a good feel and look at the combat changes that took place. So if you weren't aware, they announced not too long ago the weapons in the game now have independent cooldowns for their skills. And what I'm gonna say next was absolutely gonna make some people mad but I got to admit, I, I kind of liked it. 
I genuinely liked how combat felt with these independent cooldowns. I enjoyed being able to run up to an enemy, cast my charge ability with my spear, and then do my triple jab to do a ton of damage, swap it out to throw it and hit another enemy or finish that first one off, and then I could instantly swap to my bow and cast my spread shot or my rapid shot. And then, if things were getting hairy, I could switch to my life staff, blink away, and heal up. It honestly just felt good to have full access to the wide range of abilities and let's be real here it's only nine abilities which is definitely on the the small side when it comes to like MMOs. And I think that's gonna kind of be the interesting situation that this game finds itself in is they're trying to strike this balance between an MMO game where which typically has access, characters have access to a wide swath of skills and abilities at any given time. Even on the smaller side with games like Guild Wars 2 and ESO, other games that have weapon swapping in them. I think each of those games has access to at least 12 to 14 abilities at any given time. So New World is still on the shorter side of how many skills you can use in combat with only nine. But I digress. The point is that they're trying to have this balance between this action combat game that is inspired but drastically watered down compared to something like Dark Souls and an MMO with generic skills that you can use. Even though I enjoyed this, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a game developer and know the best possible outcome for the game. There's definitely a big camp out there of people who really like the focus on the basic light and heavy attacks, the blocking, the dodging, and all of that stuff. I just feel that their, their fundamental melee system isn't quite as nuanced or doesn't have the depth of Dark Souls, which I've talked about in prior videos. There's really no argument. It doesn't have the depth of Dark Souls. I'm not saying there's no skill or finesse that you can have in the melee combat in New World, but it is a pale comparison to the amount of things and combat variety that you have in again, Dark Souls, the game that they say this this combat system is inspired by. So I think it makes sense that they're trying to strike this balance between that basic combat system and access to your skills. And at least with my short amount of playtime in this preview event, having the full access to all three skills on all three of my weapons in every combat encounter, it felt freaking great, dude. It felt so much better than hitting two abilities in the preview event and then spamming away at light attack because that's just how you did PvE in the game. I, again, I'm not a developer. I don't know if this is ultimately the best solution in the game that's going to make put it in the best long-term position. I just got to say, I liked having access to all of my skills and all of my weapons. The, the fights and the combat in general just felt so much better to me with this current update. So uh, there you have it. That's the overview of the hands-on event that I got to take a look at this week, checking out the brand new zone of Reekwater, the fishing mechanic, the javelin weapon, as well as the change to combat via skill cooldowns. I think all around, these are some nice additions and improvements to the game, so I hope they keep going and improving the game. I hope they make tweaks to combat where they feel necessary. I hope we get more and better enemy AI and more variety. And um, yeah, let's hear more about your plans for endgame PvE, because... You know, they, they told us this was an endgame zone, but there wasn't anything that I found that I couldn't solo. Oh yeah, there was that one guy. All right, guys, so that's it. That is some of the updates and changes coming to New World. I hope we continue to see more of these better improvements, deeper systems, and more endgame PvE. Please, dear God, just give us some. Okay, thank you. I hope New World turns out good. It's the only MMO on the horizon that's not the same five I've been playing for 20 years. So do good, New World, okay? Thanks, please. Bye.